It's fair to say here at Auto Express we probably have the best jobs in the world. I get to drive the fastest and most exotic cars on the planet, transported there in business class and more often than not driven from the airport in a chauffeur driven limousine. I'm going to see what life is like on the other side by being a chauffeur for the day. Wish me luck. But before I hit the road, I had to have a masterclass in how to be a chauffeur. This is Andy Doubly. He's a chauffeur to the stars and he's the perfect man for the job. A good chauffeur, you see, doesn't just have to have a nice car, but perfection lies in the preparation. And that's even down to having the right brand of water in the cup holders. It's an art that is clearly lost on me. With the classroom lesson complete, it was time to take my client to the Savoy Hotel in central London in my Maserati Quattroporte. Or so I thought. Right, before you do anything else, first thing you do, yeah. pop that central locking, lock the doors straight away, irrespective of who it is. Straight away. Straight away. So, client's just got in, the principal's got in. Yes. She's just now decided she wants to go to Harvey Nicks. Right, okay. So, I'm thinking I need to do a U-turn here. So what do, what do you do? Just do one where it's safe or I what do personally you do? wouldn't do a U-turn, especially if it's the first time you've driven a principal. Things haven't started very well. The client wants to go somewhere completely different from where we had agreed, and I was just about to make a massive faux pas by doing a black cab style U-turn in the middle of the road. With my confidence at a rock bottom, I nervously headed out onto the road. So effectively now we've got three phases. You've got your normal, you as a normal motorist. Forget that you're a chauffeur, you're a normal motorist. Okay. So you're, not, you're watching out as normal for everything else that we all have to watch out for. Vans, yeah. bicycles, motorcycles, yeah. pedestrians and 101 other things. On top of that, we then bring in the fact that you are a chauffeur. So your clients, your principles, comfort and security is absolutely paramount. So in a way, you're no longer driving for you, you're driving for them. Right. So the style that you might drive in your own car, in your own time, is going to be completely different to the style of driving that you're going to display now with a client in the back. Yeah. Okay. Third phase, just to put a little bit more pressure on you, is the fact that effectively, especially if it's the first time you've driven a, a client, they are pretty much a test examiner because they are going to be sitting there and watching the way you do things okay okay so you've got three elements that are up against you the final element once you drive the same client on a regular basis and you get to know them that's not going to be so prevalent because if they're asleep in the back or they get their laptop out and start working or they're not even looking where they're going you've cracked it my client wasn't asleep though and was watching my every movement it was time to drive with the utmost smoothness so obviously, in terms of driving style, I've got to be as smooth and as gentle with all the controls as possible. Just think of it as the coffee cup test. So if they're sat there with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, imagine that they can't spill it. The first point on your driving, from both a, a security point of view and a sort of professional point of yes. view, is tyres and tarmac. Wherever yes. you pull up behind a vehicle, yes. you should be able to see their tyres and some tarmac. And some tarmac, okay. okay. There are various reasons for that. The main reason from a security point of view, if anything were to happen now, you can get out and go. I didn't think of that. If, no, 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 there's no reason why you should, but straight away, leaving that gap just gives them a little bit more comfort that you're a professional driver. We all know the phrase, thinking on your, on your feet. Well, this is thinking in the seat. Thinking, uh, and, thinking and, in the, I like that. And, I like that. And, and again, in it, the it's, seat. it's the difference between just being a driver and being a, a professional chauffeur. When you're driving, particularly celebrities, where you think you've got a concert venue waiting for them that's full of thousands of people who've paid a lot of money for tickets, mm. and that person that's about to entertain them for the next two hours is sat in your car, yeah. and you've got responsibility for getting them there. Have you noticed, you've noticed my, my hand movements on the steering wheel? I never drive like to. this. No. I do attend to, but I never do the no. push me, pull you. No. I'm doing that because you I thought I thought that's what a chauffeur would would, would want would, I need to do. Really. You, ju you just want to instill confidence in that principle, okay? You yes. want that principle to feel entirely comfortable with the way you're driving and what you're doing. Everything good so far? Everything's good. Everything's good. It's a very smooth ride. Okay.
So my driving was smooth, I felt comfortable, and so did my client. Noticing I was relaxed, Andy decided to turn things up a notch. Let's throw a couple of scenarios. Okay. All right. Let's, all right. let's throw a, 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 first of all, clients on the telephone. Yes. Client comes off the telephone and mentions something about the call to you. Right. What are you going to do? Um, not reply unless it's a question. Okay. You, you can't really just not reply because that would that would be that would be, be rude. rude. But what if if they even come off the phone and just say something simple like, oh, I hate that man. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know I don't know how I should react. Right. Well, I, my natural well, reaction what, I'd probably laugh or go okay. or something like that. I don't not know. Not just a telephone call. What if if there's any point at which they try to bring you into the conversation? There's a little trick here which works wonders, and that's if you just turn around and the first time you say, oh, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry, madam, as if you didn't hear. Even if you did, right. always pretend you didn't hear. Okay, all right. I'm trying to be as smooth as I would. I don't normally drive you're, like you're, this, you're, Andy. No, no you're, you're, and you're doing very well. The only the only thing I would pick up on you, pick, pick you up on back, is, was back there, there was a, a quite a pothole which you may or may not yes. have noticed. Now, I was going I to say that. I would have probably that. inched my way past that. Yes, and, yeah, and that's um, something else you've got to think about, isn't yes, it? Potholes, yes. which is quite difficult in this country. And then, thank the good Lord, Harvey Nichols was in sight. All I had to do was find somewhere to park and to keep on driving smoothly for another 500 yards, and then the most gruelling driving lesson I'd ever had would be over. Ah, oh, perfect. Marks out of 10? I'd say, quite genuinely at the moment, you're on an 8. Which, on an 8? Which, for the first time you've, you've done this, that's is, pretty is good, really good going. Your driving is incredibly smooth. It was over and I'd passed with flying colours and now I was feeling quite peckish. Time for a spot of lunch, madam. Actually, if you don't mind staying with the car. Right. Okay. Click the video window on the left for a first drive of the Maserati Levante SUV and on the right for a review of the Ferrari 488 Spider. Click our logo to subscribe to our channel and please remember to like and share this video.